when you had a shitty day and nothing's going right Waking up to a class or job that you never liked Take a moment, breathe, sit back, be a weeb May not be as bad as it all seems It's all the same, it's all the same It's all the same, it's all the same. It's all the same, it's all the same. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the band podcast. My name is Gray. And my name is Blue. And we are Bluest. Welcome to episode Welcome. 19. Of the yeah. band episode. It's almost. Podcast. Yeah. We've been 19. doing it for a while. 19 episodes. It's so weird, yeah. So it's been that a little. Funny. It's been a little. Uh, we didn't do one for February. We were just caught up on doing a lot of other things. So this is going to be a combined episode where we kind of go back to February and March. Mm-hmm. Uh, we did a lot of things. Um, and we got some questions from people. Hopefully we can answer that. We didn't do that um, at the beginning, at the beginning of the year podcast, which was the episode before this so we'll definitely do that um at the end of this one so what did we do blue for february and march we actually well it started a lot of things this year actually right um we have what feels cozy or i think our biggest project that's going on right now and i mean we started we started with of course inviting uh isekai over to feels cozy which I guess I should explain first. Yeah, what's, what's which, feels cozy? It's um, it's a new little project we're working on where we invite uh, other content creators, not just streamers, but content creators onto our stream and basically uh, ask them uh, lots of questions. So it's, it's supposed to be like a chill one, one on one on one, one on two. Yeah. Um, I guess interview almost. It's not not really an interview. We don't want it to be that strict. Although but... it is just us just machine gunning questions. <laughs> Yeah, it's um, a lot of questions. The guest. And actually, yeah. it started because uh, there was this moment going in where we were doing a lot of Final Fantasy XIV streams at the beginning of the year. And it, now that we do six hours full on, um, just one shot, six hour streams, I would be sitting there um, and I wouldn't really be playing the game. And it got to a point where it was kind of getting hard for me to kind of keep the energy up without actually playing the game but it kind of felt like i was a little distant when i was when i was playing the game so i had a talk with blue and i was like you know maybe we should think of something that i you know where maybe i could kind of do the lead or we can do and it's not always just like playing games like i want to do something more um we can also play games of course but um just something different let's do something different and blue had this idea of like you know, we do like we love playing podcasts and stuff like that. And every single time you we go out and stuff, you ask a lot of questions. So why don't you just do that? If people are interested, if people have the time, why don't you just do that on stream? And I said, okay, let's think of a name and let's do it. And then on that spot, I think I um, and I was like, at the first off, the best way to do it to start it off at least is to ask the people on our team um, to see if they're interested because I had individual questions and we had one episode so far where. The person was not on the isekai stream team but i was really really interested in that person so um they they were kind enough we did the interview and then we have other people that are planned that some people are isekai some people aren't isekai um and you know there's a limit to that too because there's a certain because the team is pretty small so after that it's going to be people that aren't on the the team yeah but yeah we do want to invite people who are not streamers as well because i think so far it's uh, everyone has been uh, streamers, but mm-hmm. yeah, we want to try and reach out to other content creators and see if we can get those people on. Feels cozy, so yeah, content creators, people that we're just interested in in general, um, just anybody pretty much that we think is interesting. Mm-hmm. So yeah, we did feels cozy. Yep. Um, Tof was our first guest on that. That was super fun. It kind of started from a place where I was just kind of lost. Like we were doing okay. 
but I just felt kind of lost and I had, I had to talk to you about it. wanted something to kind of focus on too, like something other than gaming to focus on. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. I thought it was a, I thought it was a good project to start. Yeah, and so we've been doing that, um, and then when it, but bringing it back to games, we started doing, uh, for me, um, the bluest Pokemon challenge. That was, this, I think that was like February and March too, right? That was, mm -hmm. yeah. Right, so. You were able to defeat the last gym. So. Yeah, it was it was really really cool. That Even was... though you lost your starter before the first gym, <laughs> I I was actually kind of worried that you weren't be, gonna be able to finish the the challenge because you did lose like a vital part of your team, especially since like with the recent ones. Since I've only played like one playthrough, right? So, I guess for me, I don't really know what it's like to play without my starter and it's just my starter was so OP it was like wait how do you even how would you be able to play it without the OPness of your starter so I don't know I think for me every battle was so like when you do the first playthrough you don't really care about it or like it, it just kind of like breeze through a lot of the battles but mm -hmm. each battle it really makes you, you know, get on your toes every single time and there's always you know for us in our run, Ubu was kind of like was the was the guy that kind of like followed us through and mm -hmm. helped us help the run a lot. And there was a lot of luck that got that was involved with it. Um, I did beat the last boss with just like a sliver of health. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, it was just it was just, it was really fun. It was the first time we did anything like that. Um, and it, it failed once. We tried it once. It didn't really yeah. go well, so we had to kind of readjust the rules a little bit, and then came back to that. It was really fun. It was also a really cool excuse for me to play the game again because I wanted a reason to play uh, my Switch <laughs> and uh, Pokemon, <laughs> Pokemon again. Yeah. So yeah, that was really fun. Hopefully we can do something else, um, another Pokemon challenge run uh, in the future. But yeah, and then we started doing more um, things that are YouTube-based. Yeah. We tried to do something that's more... We started doing these like vlogs. And it started, our first vlog, our real vlog, was uh, was when we went to go get our tattoos, I think it was. Yeah, it was, um, yeah. And that was just this idea that I had in my head where I was like, I don't really watch many vlogs, but I watched some, and I was like, I wonder if it could be possible. And I've never done editing before, so I didn't have any of the software, but I was like, maybe we can just do it, you know, what we, or what we already have on the computer. So um, I started doing that and I was like we do podcasts might as well just do like a mini podcast on it like a very yeah. very short one so we just talk about it so then I just had the stuff playing in the back and then I just we just kind of talk over it kind of a commentary kind of thing um and that was really cool yeah I mean after that we ended up doing a little bit more and so and we do want to keep doing that as well yeah as now just but then because of the challenge run that we did with Pokemon we decided to do another challenge run and we thought that was a good opportunity to, I guess, upload on YouTube. And so that's where we, uh, our first episode we of our Sekiro split control run, we uploaded on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, didn't, we actually didn't stream that. Yeah, because we thought, you know, maybe it won't go well. So let's just try recording it first, see how it goes, see if it's even doable. Mm -hmm. And it was. So we uploaded the first episode and then we started streaming it the next from the second one I think I think no I think we we actually have one YouTube wise I think we have up to like three episodes that are just on oh was it oh, okay yeah. sorry and then from the third or fourth one we we did we did it on stream and oh, then, okay, okay. that's a if you, if you see the chat that's when you know that um, yeah I guess we I, yeah I guess we did go through a few bosses without stream huh yeah it was pretty <laughs> rough and we kept going and going and going so yeah it yeah. Was, definitely something and uh to go back to kind of like the the vlog stuff we do want to keep doing more of them but with the corona situation we're really trying to stay in as much as we mm -hmm. can we do like go out and hang out with friends and stuff like that uh here and there but um we try to if we don't have to go outside we're trying to stay in uh it's not japan's not in a lockdown situation but of course it's better to stay in so um but hopefully when we can go out more uh we can do more of those vlogs yeah, but yeah for sure and then yeah you're right so we started we did this Sekiro split control run. We actually had yeah. the idea for a while, but we didn't want to attempt it because it's like, nah, this is fucking impossible. So we we actually tried it. We tried it, yeah. When you were still on your first playthrough, yep. And I was like, let's do something fun with this. And then you said, okay. Uh, and I was like, 
do you think we can do this split control? And because we were already doing single player games like Resident Evil games, split yeah, yeah, control, yeah. right? So I was like, do you think we can do this split control? And you're like, let's try it yeah, out. Yeah, let's try it. And yeah. you were still stuck on ape. I was, I was, yeah. I was, I was at that stage where I was burnt out because I was stuck on ape and I couldn't get through it. And I got really frustrated, so I stopped playing it. And I think at that time, because I still had that frustration, it didn't work out. But then, yes, the, our first thing that we did split control was ape, and it was it yeah. seemed impossible. Mm -hmm. But after a while, I mean, after I completed the whole playthrough, and then you know, a couple months after, we just really, really wanted to play Soulsborne game again. And so I was like, hey, why don't we try that? Why don't we try doing that again? But actually, like, for in a serious matter this time, and. It worked. So we started from the very beginning and it worked. Yeah. We were able to get through it. So and we got to through Demon of Hatred. So I think uh, it was very successful. I think the thing was, and especially with Demon Demon of Hatred, we we've never beaten that boss by ourselves on our yep. single playthroughs. And then so people definitely I guess it was like for and then I did try it on my file, right? Like afterwards. And it, it's a lot easier once you do it once. Yeah. But um People think that, you know, maybe this is easier if you do yeah. split control because you can concentrate on your roles. And to a certain extent, I agree with that. Yeah. But you need 100% trust and synchronization with the other uh, player, which is, you know, you for me. Or else you just cancel out, like, everything that you do. And yeah. you just the frustration is so much higher um, in that kind of situation. And Especially since you have to play... You kind of have to give up your play style almost because you have to match the other person. Yeah. And so maybe for this boss, you were more aggressive, but the other person was more defensive. So you have to kind of meet in the middle to make sure that you are not canceling out each other's attacks or movements. And I think that was the biggest part was I think there was frustration because it's like, no, this isn't what I would do if I was doing by myself. But it's like, no, but you're not playing it by yourself. So you can't play that way. You have to find like a new way to get through the mechanics. Yeah, it was definitely super fun, super frustrating at times, but because of that, it added a whole nother level to Sekiro, which was really fun. Um, and you mentioned that we actually didn't stream it for the first two, so it was just yeah. us um, in front of the camera with the mic and everything, like complete stream setup, but no chat. How was that? Because we've it never done so that before. Lonely. That was the first. It time was we so sad. Filmed the Let's Play, right? Yeah, because we're. Because usually with on stream, everyone's excited with you. But we got through the first one, and like we're like we're just getting excited by ourselves in our tiny little apartment, and it just felt so sad because it's like we're just yeah, we're just getting hyped by ourselves, yeah. and we can't share it with anyone. And so all we have to do is like wait for people to comment on the the video. But it's like there's that that instant like holy shit, you guys did it kind of thing, isn't? Mm. there so it was a little sad and lonely <laughs> it did feel it feel very different i mean yeah. it was and then to edit that was just another thing because we said we're gonna play for an hour and then because i can't go through all that footage on the first go mm -hmm. um not very i'm not used to the whole process so let's just do an hour and see what happens i think we ended up playing like two hours um because we got really into it um which i was expecting but to edit that and then just kind of like it does seem like we're very excited mm -hmm. in the video and stuff like that and we, of course we are excited because a hard boss is always you know exciting when you beat him but it definitely is the energy level is nowhere near as high as if if chat is there you know like one pog makes the difference yeah <laughs> like it and i really realize that um and when you mess up if you know even if it's like backseat gaming and this is probably an unpopular opinion but even with the backseat game you're just having somebody there to know that someone's watching and in a, in their own very t twisted way or whatever <laughs> supporting yeah this journey of trying to like defeat the boss whatever um is it's very different to have that versus not have that so when we actually did it on stream it was way more fun yeah we were able to stream it for six hours no yeah. problem so i think the energy that everyone kind of gives us definitely helps that we don't have that and that's something we didn't have um for youtube vid video so yeah it made me really it made me really think that 
you know, there's a lot of things that we can put up on our YouTube here, you know, and that we will, like all the ideas that we have, but, um, maybe we'll do like edits here and there, but let's plays are something that I probably, at this stage right now, we probably won't do. Like, I would rather do I'm like rather vlogs, or if it's like YouTube content, like completely different from games. Um, like editing the YouTube stuff is like, is cool too. It's really cool experience, but I also think people are more interested in our daily life more because we got a yeah. lot more reactions about the vlogs and the tattoos because it's something people like don't usually stuff. see yeah, on yeah. stream. So it's like kind of mixing that IRL stream, but editing it and showing the best parts and doing um, a YouTube vlog might be um, better in that sense. But I think it's like, yeah, so YouTube is definitely kind of something that we've been trying to kind of uh, do better. And we, mm -hmm. this podcast too, that was the main idea why we wanted to do this on YouTube starting um, 2020. More than um, just the audio stuff. Like, there's going to be the audio stuff out, but. Um, you wanted to do a video one too. Yeah. It, and I think we'll keep doing that for sure. So that, those are the kind of stuff we just kind of like bursted through all the shit that we did uh, from <laughs> February and March. But how are you feeling going from the first three months? We did we did the first video. Things were changing, right, in January. We go February and March. How, how are we feeling about... I mean, it know? definitely slowed down. The people that... Because we did have like an uh, influx of viewers at the beginning of January. Okay. Right, and it did go down, but I think that's also from um, like people were on break, so pe it, like the viewers went down, kind of thing. And also, I think the fact that if you stick to one game, you do get more people because you get those people who, because there's people who definitely come specifically for a specific game you're playing. And so, if you're not playing that game, some of those people won't come. And so, I think that was the advantage of streaming 14 every day in January. But at the same time, I think we did get burned out. So that's not, it wasn't really healthy. And now that we, but the thing is like, even now when we do switch games and maybe we play something that's not super popular, people still show up. Yeah. So I think it's, I think it's the point where we can say, we can 100% say that most of our community members are there for us. And yeah. I, I think that's something that's really, really cool. Because th most people, or like at least 90% of the people in our streams are there to come hang out with us. Not for the game kind mm -hmm. of thing. And I think that's a really cool... I think that's a really cool community. I feel really loved. Absolutely. It's like, yeah. they don't... I mean, essentially, they just don't care what we do kind yeah. of thing almost. Which, it could be taken in a bad way, I guess. But I think it's a cool thing that they're just there to hang out with us or see our reactions when we play a new game or mm -hmm. just to just... Just to spend time with us. And then uh -oh. um, something super recent was when you announced that you were going to do your first cosplay yeah. ever. <laughs> you, do, you said you were going to do your first cosplay ever as Tifa. And you're, you know, and I know we, I talked to Blue about this again, but um, she's very nervous about it. I've never done it before. Everyone says, you know, I don't know if I would be a good. I don't know. I don't know how long you do with cosplay because I don't. Yeah. And people are surprised that you've never even done cosplay before because it seems like it's right down your alley. You worked in fashion. Uh, you would kill it too if you did the cosplay. Like everyone has this, like, you know. And I think, you know, and I'm kind of on the same boat as that where I, I thought, you know, like there's nothing to worry about. Like you, you're not gonna pick something that doesn't fit you. Um, but to hear that you were so nervous and you texted me like, so I think I'm gonna, cause that day when you announced it, I think you were by yourself and um, you said, uh, I th I'm gonna announce it, right? You were, you, you were by yourself when you announced it, right? And then, or I came in, did I? You came in later. I came yeah. in later, yeah. right? Cause I remember that, yeah. And then um, you were worried about it. And I was like, just go for it, you can do it. And then on that day, the day that you actually announced it, people were nice enough and they donated for the cosplay. The cosplay yeah. And you got Which it right was insane. Away. Yeah. yeah. And then so, and it, that that itself, and I'm not saying that you know donating money is the number one way to see how strong a community is, but you can't deny that the power of you know how powerful that felt for us. Yeah. To see like, yes, I want to see this, and I will pay money to see this. Yeah. Kind of like. And, you know, 
as a streamer, nobody is going to be like, hey, give us money to like, you yeah. know, watch. It's obviously free content, but the fact that they were there, like, yes, I know that, but here, I'll support this because I want to see it and I think it'll be cool. And they want, they didn't go to any other person, but they gave, you know, that support to you and, yeah. and to the blue is to us. So, yeah, that kind of blew me away, honestly. Because I actually, to be completely 100% honest, I wasn't expecting any donations. Yeah, me neither. I really didn't think If so. I'm going to be thought, completely yeah. honest, no, not me, me neither. Yeah. I wasn't expecting any. I And I, I was going to be, I, of course, I was okay with not accepting any. Because I just thought, you know, that's something I decided on myself, on my own. Like, I was going to do this, like, whether I get donations or not. But, I mean, yeah. <laughs> That's not what ha that's not how it happened. So it was yeah. It was it's really, really powerful. It's, it was really uh, surprising. It's really, really cool. And just to see that like there's people that are always in chat. Um and we always say this, but it's just um we definitely feel that new people and you know, the newcomers that are into the that come to the community, the people that stay, just they feel like you know, when they sub or something, right? And it says like two months. It always feels like they've already been there for like twelve months. Yeah. Right. And it's weird because like when you see like twelve months, you're like, wait, I thought we just like it, it's like the other way around. Like it's <laughs> the opposite every time. And so, um, it, yeah, it just time feels so much faster when it's a longer sub. Like wow, it's already been a year. Damn. Yeah. Versus when somebody just subs and it's like two months. Like it seems like you've been here for for Forever, a while. Yeah. So it's like this, <laughs> and I think that's the best way it should be, it's, right? So. Yeah, I think community-wise, it's, it's doing good. It's doing a lot better than, um, for me personally, at least, way better than last the, year. the end. The end of last year was pretty rough, I think, on us. Um, and it probably, maybe it wasn't like that objectively, but just from like feeling-wise, yeah, yeah. yeah. We feel a lot better now. Like we have more energy going into streams, especially with a new schedule. Um, like I, I'm more excited to stream now than I was back then mm -hmm. kind of thing. I think it was a lot of it was like stress and uh, also the fact that I was really really tired all the time but now I'm I'm actually like I look forward to the streams because I do have a lot of fun with them mm -hmm. and I mean, I'm not saying I didn't enjoy the streams uh, last year either but I mean like I have more energy going into it and so I can actually enjoy the time I spend with everyone and the games I'm playing like I can focus more so, and it just doesn't seem like I'm streaming for six hours. It's still unbelievable that I can go for six hours and it feels like, wait, it's already been six hours? Like, I can go for longer kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. Streaming so. the... Th it's interesting because when you stream for three hours, it feels longer than when you stream for six hours for some yeah, reason. Yeah, it does. I don't know why. Um, it. I think it also helps that we take a break in the middle and then we eat lunch and we energize and we go in for the, mm -hmm. the, the second, third, uh, second three hours. Um, which I don't know if you, because I can't watch the streams all the time. I don't know if you do that for the solo streams. Or I know. You just go I know. Straight I just go straight in. Because like today I played till what the usual times. I didn't take a break and I wanted to keep going. And more power to you because you're stream. You're we're doing this right after your six yeah. hour stream. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I could have kept this. streaming, but I just thought it was a good because I was getting hungry. So and it was like usual time. Because if I cause, and I know that if I extend for too long, then I'm gonna be tired the next day. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't want, I want to try to be on schedule usually. Um, if I will play an extra hour or so, if, you know, if I'm maybe in the middle of a boss and I'm really, really close to defeating him or something, but I want to try to keep it within schedule so I can rest properly and I can be ready for the next stream mm. kind of thing. And so I did cut it at, at our usual time today, but I could have probably gone for longer. Mm. So it's, it's really weird. Yeah. But yeah. I, I don't. I didn't. I don't have to take a break in the middle anymore. Yeah. Cause before I would have. I. I felt like I had to. But like I wanted to. It's like oh, okay. I. I need to. I need to like. I need something. Cause I. I'm not losing energy. But now I don't need that. So. That's really really good. Also, I. I just remembered something. You actually made our our new icon. I did. Yeah, that was my first uh, digital painting. I did. Yeah. I've never made an icon before. I mean, I've never made an emote before. I've never made like anything like that on digital digital like media before. I studied like I studied art with charcoal pens, pe uh, pencils, graphite paper, like all all like the like the very stereotypical traditional way of art. I did pastels and like I did painting and drawing and stuff like that. But it was all very like it's physical stuff. Like I always had a physical paper and a physical pencil and a physical eraser. And 
So it was a very different experience going from something where you can touch something directly to using a tablet with your computer, looking at the screen while you're trying to figure out where the pen is on the screen. And it was frustrating because like I couldn't draw the lines very well. And it's like, oh my goodness, this, this looks like what I drew when I was in like sixth grade. I can draw better than this, but why does it look like this kind of thing? And it was like this internal struggle of realizing that digital media is a whole new thing so it's not gonna be like me drawing with pencil and paper it's a it's i have to re relearn how to draw on digital and i'll let you know it's also very external too because <laughs> you were definitely showing how frustrated you were i, I was getting kind of worried yeah i cried yeah because i, I was... cried it was because it was all this frustration because i didn't i had this clear image in my head of what i wanted to do mm -hmm. but as soon as i tried to do it on paper it didn't come out but i knew if i had a pen and paper like normal pen and paper i would do i would be able to perfectly do it yeah but on this tablet i just couldn't get what i wanted to get out and it's like why is this not working out am i just this bad kind of thing yeah so it was just because I was, <laughs> I was, I was on Twitch and I was, I had this idea. I was like, I, I really like our logo. I really like it. Um, it's simple. It's, but it's, it seems a little cold is where, where I was thinking. Right? It seems to kind of, it, cause there's no face on it. It's not a character. It looks like almost like a, like a clothing brand or it didn't, or like a company. Yeah. Right? Because it's a logo and mm -hmm. I, it makes it. So, although, and I tried to, and I knew that when I was designing it first. That's why I picked the colors that I picked. Very warm colors, right? Um, but still, there was a part of me that thought, you have no idea what this stream is about by looking at that icon. And on Twitch, the icon that you get to show off is so tiny. So small, right? yeah. So I was like, this is maybe we need to think of something and that's something we've been talking about mm -hmm. and i was looking it's like but there's two people there's no space and then it just hit me i was like let's just combine two faces on one face yeah we can do blue and gray on one emo right and then i think it was like a week it was like a day off and i i think you were taking a nap or something and then i was i was thinking about it and then you woke up and i was like so we'll have this idea of making an emo of it's one face but it's both of us left half is me right half is you what do you think of this um oh no no it wasn't even that no sorry it was i said let's split the the face and the left side it can be like you and then the right side can be me but like kind of like more like a distinct split and you said no why don't we just have one face and have it just one it's not split anywhere. It's just one face. It looks normal, but left side is obviously you or whichever, and then the other side is blue or gray. And I thought, how, how the hell are you gonna do that? Like, I, that's gonna look really gross. Is what I, <laughs> what I thought. And uh, she was like, okay, I'll let me think about it. Um, like, you know, maybe we can ask people. And I said, no, I want you to do it. I think it would be really interesting if we got you to do it. But if it's something that you can't do, because I know we've done like creative streams. I think it means a lot more if we make our own icon. It doesn't have to be perfect. There's going to be a lot of people skill-wise that are going to do a lot better, you know, because they're just experienced. But it means a lot more to me. It's going to mean a lot more to you, and it's going to mean a lot more to the community if you do it. And so you got your thing out, and then I was like, I didn't know what idea you had. And you started sketching it out on a piece of paper, and you're like, how about this? And as soon as you showed me that, I was like, okay, let's, this is fucking perfect. This is so <laughs> le left is... We got the left or right is blue hair. Yeah, blue hair, longer, gray hair. Yeah. And then colors, gray. eye color. And the eye yeah. colors are also different. And I was, and then I hid this side and I was like, yeah, that that definitely doesn't look like it could look like a girl, but it doesn't really look. It can also look like a guy, like my side. And then your side I was like, okay, this definitely is you. Like it's it's you. It looks just <laughs> like you. And I was like, yes, this is perfect. Let's get on. <laughs> let's try this out. And that's when hell started. That first yeah. day when you started, you were like, God! I made I made so many drafts. I redrew it so many times. We finished... I'm not even... Ha I'm yeah. still like... There's still things that I want to fix with what we yeah. have already. But I'll do that later. Because <laughs> we already... So. We, you had a draft. I did. Sorry, I did, yeah. multiple drafts that you're like, multiple, hey, yeah. how about this? And then we have our own Discord uh, server that we share. Yeah. For just kind of like sharing information, like ideas and stuff like that. And uh, we use that. 
we use that icon to like we change that to test it out and then we like how about this how about that mm. and I was like that one's pretty good it kind of reminds it kind of has this like the world ends with you kind of like classic 90s and I'm like giving all I got of like what I because I thought it was really cool and I was like and I looked to the side and she just like st- Glaring, glaring at it. I was like, no. Like, this no, isn't good fuck enough. this. And I was like, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> this isn't what I'm going for. <laughs> and then, so, so yeah, that's and then, yeah. 100% scrapped. Yeah, I scrapped you it. You scrapped yeah. it. It's yeah. gone. I don't even know where the file is anymore. Yeah. I deleted it. Yeah. It wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't what I was going for, so. You're like, it, it looks too amateur. And I was like, Boo, it's. You've never done anything like this. I, every, I don't think it's. You're not bad at drawing. <laughs> digital drawing is, you know. And so we went through yeah. all that, and then there was a period where you didn't want to work on it, and then I was like, you know, you know, but we have to, we have to do, a, we mm-hmm. have to make a deadline for this, because, yeah. you know, and at least did. get something done. And if we don't decide to use it, we don't. And we scrap the idea, and then we give it to another emo artist. Yeah. But. Um, but then I redrew it again, yeah. and then scrapped that one, and then drew it again, again. and then. I, w- I like the face structure, and then I scrapped the eyes a couple times, and then, yeah. So after a couple of, uh, or actually lots of erasing and deleting, <laughs> I was able to come up with what I have now. And I think it looks great. I think it's, I'm, I'm looking at it right now. And you like, actually have to kind of stop me, because it's like, no, this is good. Let's use this. So I was like, no, maybe I should change this. Wait, may- maybe I should do this. And then we uploaded yeah. it to Twitch, and she's like, mm, wait. And then there was like three <laughs> more drafts after that. And they're very yeah. minuscule, like, but it makes sense. I understand that there's, uh, like, the, like, like I the need back to make here it, that shows a little yeah, bit more. Yeah, because it's like, I have to delete, like, the shadow in the back because I can't see it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, little things that probably most people wouldn't have noticed, but I noticed and I didn't like it. So. You changed the face shape a couple times, and I was like, ah, it yeah. kind of looks like, uh, we kind of look like a meat bun now. <laughs> like, the face is a little chubby. Um, it's so a, it was it's, a lot of uh, editing, for sure. But I think it turned out great, and it's like... Yeah, like if you cover up the blue hair side, it kind of yeah, kind of looks like me. And then but, when you go, but now you have your hair perm, so I have to redraw it. Ah, oh, damn! I have to perm my hair. So is this? I gotta draw you with curly hair now. More projects. There's nothing wrong with more projects. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we have some uh, questions that we have from um, the sub. We have a sub channel mm-hmm. that called po- Podcast Questions, where we ask questions. I'm getting it up right now. Um, blah, 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 blah. I have some questions uh, from community. Um, first one's from Odie. Mm-hmm. Odie, our boy. And th- this one's for you. And he asks, yeah. uh, do androids dream of robot sheep? Or, I mean, I'm guessing he meant electric sheep? I'm going to have to Harrison forward that question to someone that knows. Next one. God. <laughs> Zen Gummy asks two questions. What is your absolute favorite thing about living in Japan? Uh, convenience. It's really convenient. Like uh, you can go anywhere at any time because there's buses, trains, tabs. There's yeah, and then there's a 24-hour convenience store, which in the convenience store has everything. It's almost like a mini supermarket. Um, they have fresh food, they have fresh produce, they have like toiletries, they have everything. And so it's just it's very convenient. Like you can just at any time of the day you can do whatever you want. You can get what you you're looking for. Like it's no issues any any time. Yeah. So. So that's probably my biggest thing with yours. That was definitely what I was going to go yeah. for. But I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> so I, I, I do want to think of something. I else. have another one. So wait, I can wait. say another one. Oh, what's, what's the other one? Tweets. Oh. Japanese sweets are amazing. Like, I, don't get me wrong. I love cake. And I like cupcakes and donuts. But wagashi is like the best thing in this world. And I don't think I could live without it. Like, I, want, I like my Japanese style sweets. I have one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Hi. It's another thing that I, but I don't really notice this, but I'm, um, because I never lived outside of Japan, but from what I've heard, the punctuality of public transport uh, yeah. is something that I definitely take, gra- take, it, take it for granted because growing up, riding the train, riding the bus, if something is supposed to come at 1 p.m. sharp, it's there. Yeah. It's always on time. Unless there's like an accident, but most of the time, 99% of the time, it's always on time. And that's normal mm-hmm. to us. So when people are like, wait, your, your bus actually comes at 1 p.m., I'm like, yes, that's what it says on there. That's why it comes. But yeah. that's not a that's normal why there's thing. there's a schedule, yeah. And it's not normal. No. I feel like that I would feel that even more if I lived outside. Things weren't like that, because like, 
if I'm gonna get on the train at 1 p.m. Because you, we have like phone apps that tell us, hey, if you want to get to here at this time, get on this train, this platform. It takes this many minutes to walk to the next platform, to the next one, catch this train, and it's always on time. And you can actually get there. It even gives you like, well, your walk, you know, ge general walking speed from your house to the station or to this station is about this much. And they even put that into the calculation. Yeah. Like it's the most like punctual app ever, <laughs> and it works. It works. It works. Yeah. It's always. It's usually like perfectly on time. Exactly. Um. um and next question yeah. is, what was your favorite thing about places you two have lived in before? So Gray has not lived anywhere outside of Japan, so I'm just gonna answer this one. Um. But so I lived in the U.S. and I think the biggest thing I liked about the U.S. was how. Like how um, friendly everyone is, because in Japan nobody talk to, talks to each other. Like even if you what, walk past them on the sidewalk or something, the people that I have met in the U.S. tend to just say hello. Like they'll say hello even if you don't know them, and I thought that was the coolest thing. Or they would say, they would, if you're waiting in line for something, someone like some old lady. Or not just an old lady, but like someone would just strike up conversation with you. Like it was very common to see just random strangers being really courteous and friendly towards each other, and I thought that was a really cool thing. It it made it feel it made me feel like I wasn't alone in this world. But in Japan, you have that kind of loneliness because people don't talk to each other here. That's true, and I yeah, I've only lived in Japan, but I have lived in two very different places in Tokyo, so I guess I'll say that. But.、Um, I like living near the city.、Uh, when I grew up, when I was growing up, up until、uh, high school, I used to live on more of the countryside. It was still Tokyo, but the countryside, like like West Tokyo,、um, I used to live. And、um, to get to the train station, the nearest train station was probably like a thirty-minute walk. And after that, I moved to a place where it's always like five minutes, ten minutes. Right now, we're probably like ten minutes away from the station, which is pretty far compared to where I've been living in before.、Um, And my favorite thing about living in was actually the place before where we're living right now、it、was probably <laughs> my favorite place, just because it was super close to the station, super close to the city. Is that and my favorite thing is that you can come home super late or just like go out, have drinks, and you know have a good time with your friends and not really think about when you have to go home. You can just get home anytime. And、oh if, yeah, yeah. You can walk home if you're feeling like you don't want to walk home. The cab ride's probably like five bucks、really、or something cheap, like that.、Yeah. So it's it's totally worth it if you're like if you can't even walk home. Just and that, that does kind of go with the convenience. Yeah. But just it was really really nice. I really really like that. Except for the fact that I lived right next to a graveyard, but <laughs> that was a yeah. I、creepy. remember that we would like go up to your balcony. You look down and there's like a huge graveyard. It's like oh hello. Yeah. All right. Next questions by、um, Tangled, or sorry, on Discord, Hentai Lore Master underscore forty five. I true, I truly do want to know if I will get a dab. I know it's a meme, but I really do want to know. Ah,、uh, you will not. Next question. Ah. <laughs>、uh... Let's see. Next one is. Gray, what would be the proudest moment of you when you are with Blue? This is by、uh, Lala. Yeah, Lala Roni. A little Mac- Lala, Ro-、yeah. Lala Roni. It's really hard to read his Discord username because upside down. I'm gonna have to go change that later.、Um, <laughs> what is it? What, what would be the proudest moment of you? You are with Blue. I、oh. think the proudest moment I'm with Blue is just seeing. Honestly, the biggest problem I had with. Being with Blue is that when we went to social situations, right, and we would go out to drinks or something, she's very quiet. Like, and she actually had a problem with this with you, with your ex boyfriend too, where you were like very quiet, and she was telling me about it, and I was like, you don't have to worry about it, like just be yourself. But I think you noticed what yeah, I meant I, by I'm very quiet. <laughs> like it almost seems like you don't like the other person. I know it's not like that.、Um, after we started streaming and we go hang out with people, it. Definitely changed, and I think people can people can already tell that from just watching the streams too. That you've changed a lot、um, when it comes to like social interaction or like online interaction.、Um, you're a lot more outgoing. You're more reactive, and it also does show. And I'm extremely proud that、um, 
that you ha- you actually ask questions now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when you when you go out to like hang out with people, and I think that's like and that's like a really cool thing that uh, streaming has done for you. Um, you know, I'm not saying it's definitely that, made yeah. me more talkative, I think, and more open to people, and helped with my first impression. <laughs> And so. I'm only saying that because I know you wanted to be more like that. Yeah, I did. I did. Because I didn't like the fact that I would meet these people and I want to be friends with them, but I didn't know how to talk to them. And, and then I later on, I find out that they thought I didn't like them. It's like, no, that's not what I was trying to do. Yeah. And by the way, say hello to Anne. I'm sorry. He's he's wanting to say hello. So he's making a little bit more of a camera appearance than usual. That's fine. Th- th- this is why we do the video podcast now, so you guys can enjoy these moments. And now that he's here, this is the next was a perfect question by uh, by Derp Vince Derp seven one two asked when when you were getting a dog, how did you know to pick Anu? Yeah, so uh, I think I've told this story before, but um, so when we moved in together, we I mean, we're both dog people. We both grew up with a lot of dogs, and so we kind of we were interested in getting a dog. And I really, really like greyhounds. Like that's one of the dogs I've always wanted growing up. Was the big, the big uh, like rescue a big greyhound. But greyhounds are not available in Japan, and also our apartment so small. Uh, I considered Italian greyhounds instead. I just thought they were super, super cute looking. And so I was actually looking up uh, different pet stores, and I would send gray pic- like pictures of baby greyhounds, saying like, hey, we should. We should get this kind of dog, even though he wasn't really interested in greyhounds at first, right? You wanted someone, like, you wanted a puppy that was fuzzy and like. I grew up with a Shiba. golden retriever. Yeah. So you weren't used to like the the long and hairless boy that Anu is. So, I yeah. And then so I found a pet store that had like different types of dogs along with Anu. I was like, oh hey, we should we should go here and check out the the, the Shiba and the fluffy dogs here. And then we go in. Anu was actually outside of his cage because he was a little too old, and so he was about to get shipped to like a different pet store. And but as soon as we walked in, he started jumping in his little cage, and our eyes met, and it was like first love at first sight kind of thing. So. He's the only dog that we asked to touch, like to like uh, actually pet. Got him out of the cage. Well, you wouldn't. You didn't look at any other dog. Yeah, and then and you just walked up to him after that, and I was like, yeah. we got we got to get this dog. <laughs> like this so. this is obviously. <laughs> The dog that needs to come home with us, and I think it was a week after that we decided we did all the paperwork for our apartment to get a to get a pet. They said okay, um, and yeah. this is him. <laughs> and now he he's he's a cult leader of the Blue Stream. So, and now he owns us. Yeah, so. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Um, if you guys had an unlimited budget and time for one tattoo of your choice, what would it be? says uh young oh, junior one, one tattoo of your choice mine's a crane japanese wabori piece on my all of my uh, right leg is like my last tattoo that i want to get um yeah i think if i had an unlimited amount of budget and time i would i want to get like a floral a giant floral piece on my hip down to my knee and that's something i would i'm gonna call her out but i want I've been, I want Milky to do that for me. Milky in our Discord, she's also done our emotes. Um, and so I would go fly out and have her tattoo me. That's probably my, my the biggest one I want. Cause it's gonna be a huge tattoo, right? It's gonna be on my huge. Thigh. Yeah, on my thigh and everything. So that's what I would want, probably. All right, you wanna yeah. ask Fuchans? Uh, let's see. Okay, you're now able to, what? You're now able to Dragon Ball style style fuse any two inanimate objects as long as you can touch them both at the same time. How would how do you use your new powers? So do you know what do you know what fusion is? It's like pretty much like it's, it's, so yeah, they come together. Okay. Yeah. So to make sure cuz I know you don't watch. Dragon Ball. I don't draw. Yeah, I don't watch Dragon Ball. So, you're now able to uh fusion mm-hmm. two inanimate objects as long as you can touch them both at the same time. How do you how would you use those new powers? What would you touch, first of all? How, what would you fuse? You know what I would fuse? I would fuse Anu's toilet and that little garbage can that doesn't have any, uh, that doesn't let any smell out. So every time you take oh, poops, that would be nice. poops or really peas, nice. it just automatically goes in. 
I kind of think of it as that that trash can in Sims where you just put oh, it yeah, in yeah, and yeah, the, the recycle like, bin, yeah. Yeah. It's a very I, realistic that's answer. A, yeah, that's but. a really realistic one. Uh, for me, what would it be? I would, okay, you know what I would do? I would fuse together all our closets to make a walk-in closet. <laughs> so then it would make everything so much cleaner, right? Yeah. Our closet is placed at the, it's like, it's like so the our, weirdest yeah. place ever, yeah. Our closet is just oh, like the wall over there by the bed is all closet doors. So you can't put anything in front of it. You know what yeah. I mean? Because like, you can't open it. was like this giant empty space because we like the doors are so big that once you open it, it takes up so much space that we can't put anything there. So it would be nice if I can just have like a simple like sliding door. You walk in, there's clothes, and then you can have a bigger bed and it will just be more room and it'll be great. You have to touch all of those at the same time. I can do that. I have yellow hands, okay? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's your... Uh, mine, mine's a really that's, like yeah. realistic uh, problem that we have. It's like... <laughs> I hate cleaning out the bathroom. It just it sucks. Um, you are put in charge of adding a new event. Mm, this is a good one. To the 2020 Olympics. This is Fuchan again. Uh, to the 2020 Olympics of your choice, what do you choose? You can add one new event. Uh, doggy playtime? Competitive doggy yeah, playtime? Yeah. Where... It's got to be a competition of some sort. No, right? it is a competition. Okay. It's whoever can pet the most dogs wins. <laughs> Who can pet the most dogs? Yeah, so you just give a lot of love to a lot of dogs. Okay. <laughs> I my, don't know. I just thought of that right now. My, mine would be uh, who can press the A button fastest in 60 seconds would be that competition. <laughs> I would want to see that. I want to I see something that's like... Because the Olympics is very active, it's it's very like physical endurance, it's like physical battle. I want to see something that's like so minuscule compared <laughs> to like just like running. I want to see something that's like very small movements. Yeah, but not like I think like um, you know how they have like hackathons and stuff like that yeah. where they do like programming and compete with that. If you can hack into that, I think that that kind of stuff would be really cool. To be honest, like if they like a national competition to see who can like. Um, Something that's like, but you're just sitting in a chair. You just, I want to see that more than like, I'm kind of, I, I do like seeing the physical stuff too, but I think something that's like a polar opposite of that might be cool. Or like a, no, no, you know what? Screw that. 2020 Olympics, one night werewolf. You love you that game. You get the best people. <laughs> With the because that it's like such mind games. That is true, yeah. I want to see that. That would be interesting, that. yeah. I do want to see professional like, team. Yeah, like I would love to see. One night werewolf. Like who's <laughs> gonna be the the representate like Japan national werewolf player, right? In America, <laughs> and America, and that'd be pretty cool. I think I think that'd be yeah. really cool. All right. Uh, so next question is from regular. Hey. Says, what song has resonated with you the most in recent months or overall? Um. Ooh, that's that's a really hard question. Um, resonated with you the most? There's some like um, re recently. Um, there's been a lot of uh, Gorilla Biscuit songs that I've that I really feel. Um, if ne if you have never heard Gorilla Biscuits, right? They're like they're more of like a hardcore punk, but a little bit more popular. They're really really fast. Um, and those kind of bands usually have very. Um, you know, aggressive lyrics or whatever that, but Gorilla Biscuits has aggressive positivity. It's very, this is like the way I, why, way I put it. Um, they're very positive, but not in, it's not like a really um, shallow way. It's like very understanding of the negatives too. And it's like, uh, they talk about like getting into arguments and like, but where's the argument coming from? And it's, it, they're like real problems. But like really down to earth, not like things that I can't comprehend or things that it's very, very down to earth. Um, I resonated a lot of that when I was going through like family drama and stuff like that. Uh, and when I was going through a, a rough time. Um, is there something that resonates with you? I mean, honestly, I think recently I've been listening to a lot of like anime openings mm. and I guess endings. And mm. the reason being is I think. A lot of songs that do get put into anime and so like i'm talking about like mrs green apple for example i've been really like i've been like obsessively listening to them but um 
they just tend to have a lot of songs that kind of lift you up and i tend to get very gloomy very quickly and so the, it really helps when i'm feeling down to listen to something that really like gets me going and so even like i mean what fly higher from the burnout syndrome yeah they've been they do help me fly higher fly higher yeah <laughs> or like nice. they help yeah <laughs> they help me uh i guess kind of get in a better mood mm. and so i think that's that's probably what that, that's yeah that's what i've been listening to recently or like yoriska which is of course my go-to mm -hmm. and i guess i mean but they do tend to have very bad songs sometimes yeah. but i, I told no, i guess like yeah I totally forgot that I was like, um, there, there's a specific song that I le recently listened to a lot before stream, and it's always been like a favorite growing up. Of uh, it's a band called Ella Garden, and they have a song called Jitterbug, and the song is about uh, the songs in Japanese, but it talks about how you know taking the shortcut is never the right way, um, and how the character has somebody else that says you know that helps them out through the the dark times and they're the light and stuff like that and hopefully i can have the responsibility and i have the power to be able to say that to somebody else and that really really resonates with me so i i think um i kind of forgot about that that i was it's just been like part of the routine that i kind of forgot about that but yeah i listened to that recently a lot again i listened to that a lot in middle school but um now it's i definitely I think it makes a lot more sense to me now than I did back then. I, <laughs> at the end of high school, right, um, at our school, when you take your uh, senior photo, all the seniors <laughs> post their pictures like, yeah. up in the hallway and they put a little message. And I just, I wrote lyrics to, for mine, I just wrote lyrics to Jitterbug on mine. Oh, um, really? Yeah, <laughs> in my graduation in high school. Um, what is your most treasured me these are deep questions these are regular so deep. Oh my goodness. Um, um, what is your most treasured memory honestly I think the night the day we saw Anu is a really treasured memory of mine and I think the day we brought him home well they're very big like yeah, nice memories first night was intense I still have photos yes. from that day yeah you were so small tiny <laughs> what are you trying to do yeah my most treasured memory Don't drink my water. That's a really good question. Um, oh, no, no, come on. I, I should have thought of an answer before we. Yeah, I should um, have too. Done. Did this, but I, all I can think about is like in our recent years. Um, anytime we we hit some kind of milestone or something like that, doing something creative, which is streaming, which we really, really never thought, and we we're not, we haven't hit like really big, you know milestones or anything like that um in our in the time that we've been streaming yet but the little things are like we see we get a raid or like stuff like that like those are gonna definitely they're gonna be part of this collective treasured memory i feel like and i feel like um you know how people say you know i wish was it um i wish i would, knew i was in the golden days so um so i can actually cherish it i can feel that these are the these are the things. They're the golden days. Like the like these are the um not not only golden but like these are the things that are gonna come together as really good memory. Yeah. So I think I'm in the process of creating that right now, regular. So <laughs> that's because I can't think of anything. Like there must be something yeah. in my childhood that was so rad that I you know but I just can't think of it. But what I can say right now and it's a hundred percent the truth is that I feel like all of this right now that we're doing stream wise because like. Our house has completely changed. The way we think has completely changed. The, our day to day has completely changed in the last three years, two and a half years. Um, so, it. This is all part of creating that memory. Is what I feel like. Uh, Odie asks, "Where do you see yourself in ten years?" Oh man, I honestly don't know. <laughs> so what? How old are we? The thirty-eight. Thirty-nine, basically. Thirty-nine, yeah. thirty-eight. It's so almost forty. The big four row. <laughs> Where do I see myself when I'm 40? <coughs> I don't know if I'll be living in Japan when I'm 40. Yeah, I wonder. I don't even know that. I don't even know where I'm going to be living in the next five years. Yeah. So It's kind of a hard question. <clears throat> I, I don't really think about 10 years later kind of thing. 
I try not to worry about it because I tend to worry too much, I think. So. I hope I'm not bored. I hope not either. If you're <laughs> bored at 40, I feel like um, it's, it, it's, I just hate being bored. So hopefully I'll still be doing something creative. Maybe, well, okay, when we're 40, what's going to be the new, what's going to be the new Twitch? What's going to be the new YouTube? New creative platform, yeah. yeah. Catch me on Plipch. <laughs> yeah, Plipch tube. Plipch tube when I'm 40, <laughs> all right? Check me out. Um, uh. With all these remakes coming out, what's one game you, you want remade? Final Fantasy Crisis Core. Uh, that's Crisis a, yeah, Core. That's, sorry, I was thinking. I've been something. waiting for that for so long. Parappa the Rapper 2. Per, not one. Two. Two. I want Parappa the Rapper 2. Is, uh... <laughs> I know there's a better answer out there, <laughs> but I just... That's, like, the first thing that came to my head. That's usually the best answer, isn't yeah. it? So, that's what I think. But, yeah, so we... Sorry, guys, that Anu is... Anu is having people, his yeah. little tippy taps, yeah. People that are listening to this on audio have no idea what's going on, but Anu's going a little crazy. Um, thank you guys so much for those questions. We'll ask again for the next ones. Anything you're looking forward to going into the next month? I mean, cosplay, I think, yeah, is the biggest dude. thing. So I'm a little nervous, but I'll try my best. We'll see how that goes. Which means cosplay, which also means Final Fantasy VII. Yay! It's going to be fun. It's going to be, fun. It's gonna be yeah, I think it's going to be fun. So. Am I looking forward to next month? Of course, the remake, but... Resident Evil's coming out, too. Yeah, Resident Evil 3. That demo was no so cool. Yeah. I can't wait to play more of that. Um, more stuff with Isekai 2. I want to keep doing that. Feels cozy. We got some people coming up for that. Um, I can't wait. We're probably going to do something crazy because we got... Not next month, but we do have our uh, two-year anniversary coming up, right? For Since we started streaming. Yeah. We'll Shoot. have to plan something for that, too. Yes, yeah, something fun like that. Hopefully another split control run of a hard game. Yeah. Hopefully we can do that. Oh, my God. Yeah. Anu. Anu's trying to rip my arm apart, so we got to go <laughs> now. But we'll see you guys in the next episode of the Band Podcast, all right? We'll see you next time. Right, stay cute, all right? Bye-bye. Take care.